Well, I'm delighted to say that uh, joining me on the Godcast this week is Fergus Craig. Now, Fergus is a stand-up comedian. He's an actor. He's a writer. He's a, a man of many talents. Fergus, it's it's brilliant to get you on the Godcast. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Where's Where's home, Fergus? Are you feeling the freezing cold as we are here in in Lancashire? It is very cold. Um, I live in London, but I lived a couple of years ago. I lived in Montreal for a year, and that got like regularly to like minus twenty. Right, crikey, that is cold. <laughs> minus thirty. What I think it was got to minus thirty five one night. And mm. I remember it would get to the point where it'd be minus 10. You know, that was sort of like your average temperature in like January, February. And I, and that would feel normal. And I couldn't imagine ever feeling cold again in Britain. Because <laughs> zero was just, was like balmy. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, I, it, what is it? In London, it's like five degrees outside, but I just yeah. feel cold. So yeah. I've got completely got used to London temperatures again. Good stuff, but you're but you're you're down in London, Fergus. But you you're familiar with the north. You, you went to uni in Manchester, is that right? Yeah, Manchester. I think it says on the internet, University of Manchester. But I went to Manchester Metropolitan University. Okay. Yeah, the old poly. Yeah. What What was your What was your craft there? What were you studying other than studied... alcohol and late nights? <laughs> I, st- I studied acting. So it's a like um, the acting course. At Manchester Met is a bit it's sort of separate to the rest of the university it's basically a drama school so I did a degree but it doesn't really mean yeah. anything <laughs> <laughs> how did you find that Fergus uh, you know did you find it um a competitive environment or, or was it kind of everybody pulling in the same direction you know um you know a, a, a class full of lovies for want of a better word was, was it kind of was the moments of I'm better than you, or, or did was it was it just fabulous? Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was probably competitive, in a sort of petty way. But I mean, even maybe it's different if you go to RADA or something. But even though it was a very hard course to get on, only a few of them are actually end up being professional actors. So there was like a good cross-section of the country on that course I guess. yeah when I when I uh, when I got my theology degree awarded Fergus I got it awarded at Carlisle Cathedral of all places but but it was attached to Cumbria University and it was full of drama students and and um as the theologians went through and picked up their awards there was a very gentle ripple but as the the drama students went through there, there was this monumental cheering and woo woo you know and all, all that but I couldn't help thinking to myself, you know, where are all these people going to work? There's only so many jobs to go around. Um, but you've been very fortunate, Fergus. I mean, you 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 made the breakthrough. What was your what was your your first break in in you know post uni life? Um, well, straight after uni, it went all right. I got a few adverts, which are always very helpful, and then I got um, into the RSC. So I remember work, I was working, I was doing the night shift in Tesco, living with my parents. Uh, I did it for like a couple of weeks and then I got a job in the RSC to move to London and I told the woman, my like boss at Tesco that I was doing that and she couldn't believe I was making such a massive mistake. And all I'd done is stack shelves to like a, a completely, just I'd competently stacked shelves and she was telling me I had a real future at Tesco. And I often look back and I think, oh, maybe I would have had an easier life if I had just kept like doing that. I could have ended up like on the board at Tesco or something. Mm. But um, no, That's... I went to the RSC, but then it was then I had a quite a tough couple of years after that. So the, the the thing that got me in was doing I was in a double act with a guy called Col- Colin Holt. Yeah, and we did a couple of Edinburgh shows, and that's what sort of like got me in. It's so funny you're talking about Tesco. As somebody who used to be a manager for Argos, you know, I remember those Did conversations you? trying to persuade people to hang around, you know, when they they were clearly destined for far greater things than than pulling a, a cage of of uh, toys into a stock room. Um, I, for... I think I made the wrong choice, but yeah, <laughs> I shouldn't have stayed. <laughs> Fergus, what was your what was your first paid gig then? Can you remember? Do you know what my first paid acting gig? 
I was still at drama school. I was just finishing. And Radio 5 Live, or whatever they were called then, were doing a dramatisation of... Do you remember the trial of Lee Bowyer and Jonathan Woodgate, the football? Yes, I do. Yeah, vaguely, yeah, yeah. I it was a big scandal. They'd been... Well, it's quite grim, really. They'd, um, they'd beaten up a British Pakistani lad or been accused of it. And there was a trial... And um, they were doing some documentary about it where basically I played Lee Bowyer in court. Right. <laughs> on Radio 5. So, I mean, it's, it's, everyone's got to start somewhere, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. First one, Lee Bowyer. Uh, and, and your relationship with Colin, who you touched on, was that um, was that an immediate kind of let's do something together, let's let's write together? How did, how did that evolve? Just... Just tell us, and perhaps just for people who, who aren't aware, just t- tell us a bit about that partnership. Uh, yeah, well, we went to drama school together. We were in the same year in Manchester, and um, we're very good friends. And we went to, through drama school, we got the chance to to stay in Tanzania for five weeks, putting on a play. And um, it, we had a lot of, we sort of like, organically became a comic partnership during that trip. And then when we came back, we did a couple of shows in Manchester and it just, and then, um, yeah, eventually by about 2003, when Colin moved to London, where I already was, we started doing comedy gigs in London. And then, so then we were a proper double act, I guess that's when we started sort of um taking it seriously yeah um for so i'm I'm somebody who has written a book and um right in the singular how how did that that partnership work in terms of writing was it uh you know i have a mate we've done some really we've done some sketches as vicars in the past and you know i I would usually write and then we'd kind of add a little bit and form it. How did it work for you and, and Colin? Was was there prescribed times to sit down and write or 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 did it just come quite naturally to you? It was best in the early days. It was harder when it became more of a job. But we both, uh, when we first started in London, we both worked in a call centre, the same call centre, and uh we had Wentz, we would take Wednesdays off and do a show that night. And we would always write two or three sketches that day to perform that night. And it was so, we hated our job at the call center so much that it was such a joy to do that. And we just messed about. You say this, I'll say that. That's funny. We just made each other laugh. And it was just very, um, I don't know, joyous. And then we did, show that night and that, that's all our best stuff came out of that time really when it was more of like a hobby um and then when we went on yeah we took it a bit more seriously and it was more a job um but yeah we would always be in the with colin we would always be in the room together trying to make each other laugh someone sitting at a computer trying to write it all down yeah I'll come come back to the writing in a bit if that's all right. But but who who were you, who were you influenced by Fergus? I'm interested because I'm you know I'm a I'm, I think I'm a few years down the uh, down the corridor than yourself. And 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 it was funny because last night I watched on BBC Four a rerun of the of the very last Young Ones, um, which was kind of you know I just adored Young Ones as a kid. Who who were you influenced by as a, as a young guy in terms of comedy? Um, well, my big era like coming of age, it was the 90s. So all the obvious ones from then, really, like Reeves and Mortimer and um, all Chris Morris stuff and um, Father Ted, who at Partridge, obviously. All that gang, all the 90s stuff was... But, I mean, I don't know. When I was a kid, I loved Mr Bean. I loved Blackadder and, and the young ones as well. Mm-hmm. But no, my sort of era was the nineties. Yeah. 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 
and, and, and something else I was interested to ask you about was, um, you know, um, character comedians, you know, comedians who who, who play characters. This seems to, I might be wrong, but it seems to have kind of dropped off the TV networks in terms of, you know, things like the fast show, things like, um, you know, just sketch sketches, you know. Do, do you think, do you agree with that? Do you, do you think those times will come back or do you think it's just a, you know, comedy's moved in if to, into a different genre, if that's the right word, and sketch comedy is kind of a thing of the past? Well, I'd like to think it would come back, but in a way, I can't really see it happening. I think there's two main reasons that that's happened. One, um, sketch comedy is really expensive to shoot because you say, oh, we're going to do a sketch on a farm and then we'll do a sketch in a doctor's surgery, and then we'll do a sketch in a supermarket. You, there's a lot of different locations and costumes, and and each new one is expensive, right? But if you're doing a sitcom, which you could say is also dying, but at least with a sitcom, you've got like usually two, three main locations, and you can shoot. So it's just a lot cheaper to shoot. So sketch shows are really expensive. And there's a lot less money to make things in TV at the moment. And then um, also, I think the internet, for sketch shows in particular, rather than people would used to sit down and watch a half an hour sketch show, and maybe people always said about sketch shows, they're hit and miss, you know? But now people will just watch videos on the internet. You get a one or two minute Video. If you wanted to make a sketch, you just make it, don't you? You just make a video, and then if you're lucky, that might go viral. <clears throat> but to to put that on TV seems like almost sort of old fashioned. Um, I think that's what it is. I think sketches in particular <clears throat> have just been killed off by the internet. Yeah. Do Do you think that has a knock on effect in in terms of comedy writing? Do you think, you know, it it kind of shifts people away, you know, like, why should I bother if it's not going to go anywhere? Or... Maybe. I think it's really difficult. I don't know what... I mean, there's obviously... A, there's, I don't know if there's more or less than there ever were before. There's obviously a lot of young comedians coming up, but they probably end up... They're more likely to end up as, like, YouTubers or on TikTok or whatever, which is a little bit different. But, yeah, everything's sort of changing. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Mm. There's also, like, reality TV as sort of... Someone saying, like, I think that's sort of killed off... Not killed off, but made sitcoms more difficult. Because reality, reality TV, a lot of... A lot of, like, documentaries or... That's more on the reality side are sort of cast like sitcoms. Do you know what I mean? Do you yeah. see what I mean? They, yeah. They'll get... I thought... Like, you wouldn't make necessarily The Office now, although that was a spoof of a of a documentary. Now they just go, well, it's cheaper. Why don't we just make the documentary and we'll find a David Brent-like guy. Yeah. And we'll, f we'll find some funny people. Yeah. From real life and we'll film them. And that's, I think that that's a lot, there's a lot less it's to tuck into there. It's a lot less meaty. It's a lot, a lot yeah. less substance. But I think that's sort of what's happened. Yeah. Interesting yeah. stuff. And in terms of your um involvement as a comedian, Fergus, you you know, you you're with Colin for quite a while and, and and then you know this was it difficult to move on or or you know and become a kind of um a standalone artist? Were, were you fearful of that or, or or was it just was it the natural way it went? No, it was quite difficult. I didn't like, it just sort of organically happened, came to an end. And it was quite difficult, really, the whole thing. Um, I did an Edinburgh show on my own, which was all right. And then, I don't know, yeah. It was, it, there's like pros and cons to working on your own, you know. There's that, it can be a lot more fun mm. working with somebody else. But then you're sort of like whole, career and happiness is tied to someone else and where they're at and um do you miss it, it do i miss it i'm 
I miss working with other people as often as I used to do. Yeah, I do, do miss. miss. Do you miss Colin, working with Colin? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I miss. It's more like, do I, I sort of miss being 23. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? Like, I do. Yeah, you know, that was alone. a time. Yeah, that was a time that was like, in some ways, very difficult at the time because, you know, yeah. That being in your early twenties, you're not sure about everything. But there was it was all the whole, you know, everything was filled with possibility, <laughs> you know. And it was a lot of fun just making stuff with you, mate. So I do miss that and I do miss collaborating as often as I used to do. Yeah. If I'm honest. But there's and benefits to, to Fergus, do. I was looking at your resume. I mean, cracky, it's 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 pretty broad, isn't it? Uh, you know, you've you've done many different uh, genres of comedy. I was you, and you've worked in in children's comedy as well. Um, I noticed. Just tell me about that because I think you know I've I've had a couple of comedy gigs at our church and uh, Tony Vino. I don't know if you know Tony's a is a is a a, a cracking comedian up here. Um, and he does a, you know, he does like a, a show for a more adult audience, but he can he can cross the void and 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 entertain the kids at the same time. I could never do that. I find that a really difficult working in that field. How how was that? Was the, what is the gear change? If you can put your finger on it. Uh, well, I've never done live comedy for kids. I imagine I I don't know how confident I'd be at that. Oh my, a go someday, but. For telly, we did um, a sketch show called Sorry, I've Got No Head. I was in that, and that was for sure. And I think the whole, I wasn't in, wasn't in the first series, but I think the whole idea of the show was it was writers and performers just trying to do what we thought was funny, but making it accessible to kids. So obviously there's things you can't do for kids, and obviously you can't. We don't, you can't do a job about, you can't do a, a sketch about something that kids wouldn't understand, you know, like we'd have to remind ourselves kids don't understand a lot of jobs. <laughs> you know what I mean? But beyond that, we were just trying to be funny. So we're just being very silly and trying not to dumb down. So in a weird way, it's not that different. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, was it was it as enjoyable for you? Did you did you enjoy just being crazy? Yeah, it was so so much fun because it was uh, it was very hard work actually. Sorry, I got in the head because it was like a lot of sketches filmed in a day. So, but it was just a lot of fun. The people in it were enormous fun, and you sort of like that's another thing you don't quite appreciate it at the time that. That's not necessarily going to be your whole life doing stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? It was a no, like so many different characters every day. Yeah, I, you know, it was a lot of fun. And and something else I'd like to ask you is is around, uh, you know, your your as I said at the beginning, you're you're a writer, you're an actor, and you're a performer. Which of those do you uh, get the greatest satisfaction from? Do you know? Do you do you enjoy the creative process where? You know, literally at a screen as we are now, and and you start that process, or 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 is there no bigger vibe than getting on a stage and performing it, or or in front of a camera? Um, it's always the thing that you're like not doing that you want to be doing. Um, I think the thing I enjoy most, the actual process, is is making TV <laughs> because um, because of the nature of my career i've spent so much time on my own do you know i have spent so i spent so much time at home writing that when you're actually on a tv set you've got like a crew and a workplace and you're always busy and you're making something i yeah that's the thing i'm most enjoy is filming tv which is probably because i don't do as much of it as i would like but um yeah and and as a as a writer fergus maybe you could just explain to the watcher or the listener 
the biggest frustrations you know i i, I know a quite a well established comedian who who's who's written numerous bits and bobs in the hope that uh tv radio might pick them up but with no success J- just explain how even as somebody like yourself fergus who's well established in the industry um, the challenges and and, and frustrations of, of trying to get um you know uh, get picked your work get picked up for tv or radio um it's awful <laughs> it's really <laughs> horrible it's like it's just the nature of the beast it, but when you look at it, you know, I'm always writing scripts, some of which which all go, some of which don't go anywhere, some of which go quite far but don't get made. Sometimes one will actually get made. But the whole process is, is awful. <laughs> because, I mean, when you, there's only so many slots, right, um, available. I mean, everyone knows it. I mean, it's what, if any child says they wanted to be in this in- industry, a parent would say, you know, it's a very difficult thing. <laughs> you know, there's only so many slots on TV and a lot. there's a lot of famous comedians who are trying to get sitcoms. Some of them probably got less chance than me because of wherever they are in their career or where they're, what they're perceived to be by the industry at that moment in time. There's only so many slots. It's it's really hard. I don't know <laughs> what else to say. It's like mm-hmm. there's a lot of um, you spend a lot of time working on things that never see the light of day, and there's a lot of rejection, um, and a lot of you know some years are really good, mm-hmm. and then sometimes there's a lot of anxiety, but your finances <laughs> so i haven't i haven't had a real i've never had a real job with a salary and i haven't done a real job of any sort <clears throat> since 2005 which is a really nice thing to be able to say but at mm. the same time <clears throat> it's really hard sometimes <laughs> making it, it work yeah you just got me thinking there fergus so do you consider yourself as a creative artist I asked this question because I interviewed um, for the Godcast a musician um, called Lone Lady. She's who's based in Manchester. Who's who's had relative success, but um, never never enough to kind of go and live in the Caribbean. You know, just to to kind of get by. Um, I love she, Lone Lady by the way. By the way, she's fabulous. Absolutely fabulous she music. Does, I've got her album on my phone. She does one of my favorite songs. Anyway, go on. Yeah, and and she was like. You know, I, I need a bit like yourself, you know, said I've never had a proper job. Um, and and, uh, and people hear me moan about the financial situation, but she said, and I could go and get an office job, but, you know, I need the space. I need I need to work in isolation to be at my creative best. Do, do you kind of get that then? Um, probably not that need to work in isolation. I really like working with other people. Um, I I feel very privileged to have like spent this amount of time deciding what I want to do with my days most of the time. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't feel like an artist in a sort of like lofty way. No, I just. I just feel like I want to cling on to this life that I've built myself. <laughs> That's really honest, the life. I like that answer, Fergus. It's true, though, isn't it? Just cling on. But but your uh, but interestingly, your your writing has has evolved into being a, a book writer, uh, uh, tips for actors, and then and these. Um, what's the best way to describe them? Spoof crime stories spoof, spoof crime novels yeah yeah that's what i've done i created this character detective roger le carre and um yeah i've written two so far novels that are just very very stupid is yeah. it hard to, is it hard to write very very stupid fergus i mean you know I, i've i can say i've i've just published a book and i love it but it was you know the story was pretty. It it was a real story, so it's quite easy to tell a real story. To create, right. you know, 
stupid crime stories. I, I could just couldn't know where to start. Was is it is that an easy process for you? Does it come really naturally, or are there endless hours of kind of <laughs> drinking coffee, thinking where the hell am I going with this? Well, there's definitely that. <laughs> that definitely happens. Um, I definitely wouldn't call it easy. The story is it's good it's good to get the story cracked, but really I'm parodying crime novels, so they're very formulaic, right? So to fit it within that template is not that hard. But just trying to because I'm writing they started out as one or two minute sketches, but these books are like, they're not huge books, but they're proper novel sized books. And to hold the reader's attention for that long whilst doing a lot of stupid jokes is, is difficult. So sometimes I'll find myself going down rabbit holes and it's a long time before anyone else reads or hears any of the jokes. So I'll write some chapters in both of those books are just so absurd, the situations that he finds himself in. And I think I'm going crazy. And I'm like, well, it, it's so long before anyone else gives me any response to it. <laughs> There's that real fear of like, will anyone else find this funny? Do I even find this funny anymore? This is just insane. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm one just... in the, sorry, I was going to say in the, in the first novel, he, he goes... Roger Le Carre ends up going to New York and I think that I sort of had a breakdown while I was writing that part of the book. It was just so insane. I didn't know how I'd got there. But I think I got away with it. Yeah. I, I've interviewed a few authors. Uh, um, Jeffrey Archer, kind of at the crime novel, um, maybe a slightly right. different take to yours. And then Steve Nallen, who has just written a, a children's book. Um, and, they, and they're both kind of alluded to the fact that the joy comes from uh, sitting at the desk in the morning with writing and not quite sure where you're going. Do, do you get a buzz out of that? You know, just wait, letting your imagination run free. Um, yeah, I do. There's a lot of satisfaction when something, when you, when you do a paragraph that you, that didn't exist. 20 minutes before yeah. and you really like it there's good days and bad days it's sometimes a bit of a slog but um yeah it's a it's a mental thing like of i mean my books are they're just there's a lot of jokes in them right so just the the process of writing i don't know how many jokes there are in the book like one or two thousand jokes or something the process of writing that many jokes and trying to make them different and interesting is yeah it's how, how long did the first book take you to write fergus and then how long did the second book take they probably maybe the second book was a bit quicker just because i had a i had less time to write it but they probably both took about three or four months of actual full-on writing um yeah about that long and, and one or two thousand words a day, and and now I've I kind of I've joined the writing community. I, can you offer some um, encouragement to writers, Fergus? I mean, you know, w um, just tell us perhaps how you got your publisher. Was it picked up quickly? Was it was it quite protracted? Was it similar to the TV stuff? You know, you've got to keep going. You've got to get the right person. You've got to get the right deal. Just share a bit of that if you would. Would. It the publishing world for me was, I imagine people will find this quite annoying because I was very lucky. Um, my route was quite unusual. Basically, I was doing this character on Twitter, these videos, this middle-class dad character called Martin Fishback. And uh, he was reading out extracts from these crime novels that didn't actually exist. And they became, they went viral. A couple of those videos went viral. And I got approached by a couple of publishers to ask me to write a novel. So I, it was like, it was, for me, I was very fortunate. It was like a publisher's idea that I wrote a book before I, it was mine. So um, it is, I, I don't know much about how to get into, I mean, it's, 
it's very difficult, isn't it? I think the main thing is just to write what you think is funny or interesting and don't judge what you're writing too much while you're doing it. Just write and write yeah. and write. And then it's up to other people to decide whether it's good or not. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think, yeah, you just, there's no point thinking about being a writer for a long time. It's, yeah. You just have to write. And that, particularly with books, right? Yes, there are fashions, there are trends of what sells and what publishers want to see. But really, you could have a book about anything written in any style and it could find an audience. Mm. So you might as well just keep writing and find out what kind of writer you are. Yeah. And then it's up to the gods whether that goes anywhere. You know, it's kind of beyond your control. You just have to do the best that you think you can do. Yeah. And there was the very tenuous spiritual link there. It's up to the gods. <laughs> yeah. Um and, and is there more to come in this series, Fergus? Are you are you writing the next one? Are you got plans? I hope so. I'm not writing the next one yet. Um I'd I'd love to write more for as long as people want to to read them. I'd love to do a TV thing with it, you know, talking about that with people. We'll see where that goes. Yeah. But I, you know, I'd love for it to be. So just remind people the the titles again, Fergus. If anybody's interested to go and make a purchase, available on on Amazon. And those YouTube clips of the character Martin are also there to see, aren't they? Um, yeah. Well, you can find some of those clips on my Twitter at Fergus Craig. But um, the first book is called Once Upon a Crime, and the second is called Murder at Crime Manor. They're great stocking fillers. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely Fergus I, I really loved chatting to you and I, I, I love comedy it's my favorite genre I, I, I love the creative instincts of performers and writers and um and and just you know what's lined up for Christmas are you are you, are you working or are you um choosing to do nothing over Christmas um um we're having the family over for Christmas Christmas I don't know what's coming up before Christmas. I, it's very, you never know with my job what's coming up. Do you know what I mean? I've got a meeting later today about potentially going to Toronto next week. But I don't know. That's my, I really don't know what I'm doing from one week to the next. That would be nice to be filming in Toronto. Yeah. But there's a high chance I won't get that job. So I don't know. I don't know. No. I never know what I'm doing next. No. But you're looking well on it, Fergus. You're looking thank well. You. You're looking happy, which is, which is good. And 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 thank you for your encouragement to other writers, particularly, and 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 thanks for making us laugh for for many years. And and uh, and may you have a great Christmas when it comes. And and thanks for coming on the Godcast. Thanks, Fergus. Thanks for having me. Bye.